Do you have a specific song that you, is signature for you that you love to tell the story behind? Gosh, I mean, I don't know. It's like trying to ask which one of your kids uh, you love the most. <laughs> but uh, I don't know if there's any extraordinary stories, but of course, uh, my relationship writing with Alan Jackson yielded uh, Don't Rock the Jukebox and Dallas and some of those songs. So those are, those are pretty special to me. You and Alan were friends before you started writing together, before anything yes, ever Yes, I, I actually had met him when he was working in the mail room out at TNN. Uh, so yeah, we were good friends. That, and that's, that, that stayed the course uh, throughout the career. So when you went in to produce him, you really had in mind like a, a sound and everything. You just knew him and you know what he wanted to say. I like. think I think we both did, you know, and, and a lot there was tremendous influence from people like George Jones and uh, and then I brought influence from uh, Johnny Horton, which would kind of mixed into that whole that whole stew. Being around and seeing your you know, you know, because a lot of people don't realize that your dad was a performer and a writer and worker with, and worked with Johnny Horton and was part yeah. of that sound. And then here you were part of the Louisiana Hayride. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That was that influential, and you, did you? Oh, bring absolutely. That? I mean, when I was like in the second grade, my dad was had me backstage at at the Hayride, walking around, and I was meeting people like Billy Walker and Farron Young and Verlin Husky. Uh, and I was just taking the, the nudie suits and the whole thing was like, this is amazing, you know? So I was, I was taken at a very early age. Well, I have to ask because you, having that Louisiana influence and all the country, but then to have songs by, okay, Dr. Hook was one of my favorite bands of all time. So Sexy Eyes was a big deal for me. And so to find out- At that the skating rink, right? Yes, at the skating <laughs> rink. It, that was a big skating rink song. So how did some of those pop hits, that and Al Jarreau and all those, how did that even it, start? I just like writing, period, you know? So a lot of times it was not stylistically pointed one direction, but uh, an artist or a producer would hear it and go, I think I can make a pop record out of it. I think I can make something that's that's you know out outside of Nashville. So that's it just got I got lucky. Okay. Blessed. Sexy guys, where were you when you wrote that? I had just come back from lunch with a guy that was uh, actually an admin guy at the publishing company, and I said he said let's write a song. And, I, and he said, I want to write a song about the disco. And I said, well, I don't know anything about a disco. Tell me about, what do you do at a disco? <laughs> and uh, he goes, well, you do this and this. And I said, well, just start talking and I'll start writing. So he, his, his name was Bob Mather and he was, he was just, a, he was a, an admin guy. He wasn't even a writer, but he started telling me, this is, this is what happens. I'm a DJ at the disco, this is what happens. And the next thing I knew, I had, I had scribbled out Sexy Eyes. And, and it was on my first demo session. So this stuff became, I, I didn't realize how difficult it really was, you know, so I got extremely lucky uh, right, right out of the gate. Uh, I don't know, it just just the universe smiled on me a couple of times. So. And a worldwide number one hit. Yeah.